Salt is one of those ingredients we use every single day without giving it much thought. We sprinkle it on our fries, mix it into pasta water, and it hides in almost every packaged food we buy. But if you've ever walked down the spice aisle, you've probably noticed that not all salt looks the same. On one shelf, there's the familiar box of plain table salt, and right next to it, you'll see jars of sea salt, sometimes fine and powdery, other times in big crunchy flakes, and even in colors like pink or gray. That's when the question kicks in. What's the real difference between these salts? Is sea salt truly better for you, or is it mostly clever marketing? Today, we're going to break it down and see how table salt and sea salt really compare, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with how each type of salt is produced. Table salt is usually mined from underground salt deposits. Once extracted, it goes through a heavy refining process to remove minerals and impurities. Anti-caking agents like calcium silicate are often added so it flows freely and doesn't clump up in the shaker. On top of that, most table salt is fortified with iodine, a public health measure introduced in the early 20th century to help prevent goiter, which is a swelling of the thyroid gland caused by iodine deficiency. Sea salt, on the other hand, comes from evaporating seawater. Depending on where it's harvested, it may contain trace minerals like magnesium, calcium, and potassium. These minerals don't dramatically change its nutritional value, but they can influence the color, flavor, and texture of the salt. That's why some sea salts look gray, pink, or slightly beige compared to the bright white of table salt. So in short, table salt is more processed and uniform, while sea salt is less refined and carries some natural variations. One of the biggest differences people notice is in the taste and texture. Table salt has very fine, consistent grains. When you sprinkle it over food, it dissolves quickly and gives a sharp, salty punch. It's reliable, predictable, and it blends seamlessly into recipes. Sea salt, however, often comes in larger, more irregular crystals. That means when you bite into a flake or crystal, you get little bursts of saltiness that can feel more complex and even more satisfying. Some chefs love using coarse sea salt as a finishing touch because those crunchy crystals add a subtle texture that table salt can't provide. As for flavor, some people claim sea salt tastes cleaner or more earthy because of the trace minerals. In blind taste tests, the difference isn't always dramatic, but on fresh foods, like sprinkling sea salt over tomatoes or chocolate, it can definitely feel more pronounced. Here's where things get interesting. Both table salt and sea salt contain about the same amount of sodium by weight, roughly 40%. That means if you're concerned about sodium intake and high blood pressure, switching from table salt to sea salt won't magically make your diet healthier. Too much of either one can still pose risks. The trace minerals in sea salt, while real, exist in very small amounts. They're not significant enough to provide your daily requirements of magnesium, calcium, or potassium. You'd need to eat an unhealthy amount of salt to get any meaningful nutritional boost from those minerals. And by then, the negative effects of sodium would outweigh any benefits. The one big nutritional edge table salt has is iodine. Since most sea salt is not fortified, relying solely on it could put you at risk for iodine deficiency, especially if you don't get iodine from other sources like dairy, seafood, or eggs. For most people, that's not a big concern, but it's worth remembering. Now let's talk about perception. Over the past couple of decades, sea salt has developed a reputation as being more natural or healthier than table salt. You'll see it promoted on packaging as if it's a premium, wholesome ingredient. And while there's nothing wrong with preferring sea salt for taste or texture, the truth is, it's not a healthier choice in terms of sodium. 
The marketing often plays on the fact that sea salt is less processed and contains trace minerals, which sounds appealing. But scientifically speaking, the health difference is minimal. If you're trying to cut down on sodium for blood pressure or heart health, switching to sea salt won't solve the problem. The only real way to lower sodium intake is to use less salt, no matter the type. That being said, there's no denying that sea salt feels more artisanal and gourmet. Sprinkling flaky Malden salt over a steak or caramel gives a different culinary experience than using table salt. And that aesthetic value, the texture, the crunch, even the look, does play a role in why so many people prefer it. Another key difference is cost. Table salt is extremely cheap since it's mass-produced and widely available. Sea salt, depending on the variety and where it's harvested, can be several times more expensive. Specialty salts like fleur de sel or Himalayan pink salt can get even pricier. For everyday cooking, like seasoning pasta water or baking, you'll probably want to stick with table salt or kosher salt since you'll be using larger amounts and don't need the texture of expensive sea salt. For finishing touches on dishes where presentation and flavor bursts matter, sea salt might be worth the splurge. There's also the environmental side to consider. Mining table salt can have ecological impacts, like altering landscapes and producing waste. Sea salt harvesting, while often viewed as more sustainable, isn't without its issues either, especially if seawater sources are polluted with microplastics or heavy metals. Some studies have found microplastic particles in sea salt, raising questions about contamination. That doesn't mean sea salt is unsafe, but it's a reminder that natural doesn't always mean perfect. If environmental impact matters to you, looking into the sourcing practices of your salt can help you make a more informed choice. At the end of the day, both table salt and sea salt have their place. If you want something affordable, reliable, and fortified with iodine, table salt is a solid choice. If you enjoy the crunch, the variety of flavors, or simply the experience of using something less processed, sea salt might be more appealing. The most important thing isn't which one you choose, it's how much you use. Sodium is essential for our bodies, but too much can increase the risk of hypertension and heart disease. The World Health Organization recommends less than five grams of salt per day. That's about one teaspoon. Considering how much sodium is hidden in processed foods, most of us already go over that limit without realizing it. So whether it's table salt or sea salt, moderation is key. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.